Hey guys, it's Power Johnny Tech Review and I hope you guys are all doing well. So it's been about two weeks now and I've been playing with this little toy here. This is the Samsung Odyssey Mixed Reality headset. So this one I actually don't own, this belongs to my friend who uh, was graciously enough to let me borrow it. I'm gonna go through it real quick to show you some of the features and explain to you my experience of using it, some of the good things and some of the bad things on it. Uh, so first of all, the unit itself as you can see, uh, it is probably, I would say a pound, pound and a half, maybe two, almost two pound. Uh, it sounds heavy, but when you put this in your head, I was able to play for an hour, two hours, no problem actually. After about 30 minutes, you feel a little bit of a pinch, but you kind of take it on and off. So around it, you, know, you have all these letter here. I think it's, they're, they're not, I don't know, they're real letter. I think they probably just bonded letter uh, around the earpiece, the eyepiece here. It's all good, but uh, after about playing about for 30 minutes, I think you will get a little bit sweaty. So just remember to take a little short rest. The unit has an adjustment in the back for your head. Uh, I have a pretty decent side head, and it works pretty well. It actually stay on there with the, the um, nose piece here that kind of, you know, where you will rest on your nose. So in front, you have the camera system itself, a glossy front, which I really don't like, two camera here. At the bottom, you have the volume control and the rigid one, the, you know, the plus one. And then you also have the little lens adjustment. Uh, speaking of the lens, it is one of these, I think, funnel lens, I think that's what they call them. Uh, these are glass lens, and in general, I had no problem with them. They look really good. I think these are the same ones that are in the Oculus and the Vive. Just be careful when you're cleaning them not to, um, you know, scratch them. The headphones themselves are built in. These are the AKG headphones. So a lot of complaints about these uh, headphones online that are not good to me in my experience, even as an audio snob. I feel like these works pretty well. Uh, they have directional sound, spatial. So as you put them on and you hear stuff flying around, you can really feel them, which is really, really nice. On the other end, let's take a look at the plugin. You have a USB uh, 3 plug and then you have a HDMI plug. That's really the only two input. Uh, besides this, you also need a Bluetooth 4 support. So I didn't have that. My friend have uh, the same problem, but he has a desktop just like me. Uh, he bought a Bluetooth dongle and then all you have to do is just uh, connect the motion controller to them. So speaking of the motion controller, this is what they look like uh, as you can see. So in my hand, they feel pretty comfortable. I have a thumb a pad here, you have a D-pad uh, that is also a touch sensitive uh, kind of pad uh, that works pretty well. You have a window button, a um, menu button in the back, you have a trigger for great for shooting game and then you also have another kind of middle finger or thumb button on your side. Uh, it's replicate on both sides but they are left and right and uh, there's a writing in the back to let you know what uh, unit it is. So these has LED that kind of come on and then they're being tracked by the headset so that's how they're able to track your hand in this space. So in general, uh, I really like the tracking on this unit. I was really surprised on how well the tracking worked. I never used a full VR headset before but everyone say the tracking works really well on this and uh, yeah, in my experience I have no problem. The only time I lose tracking is when I'm crouching down a little bit and the unit itself is over my head like this, but uh, there's not a lot of time where you're doing that. Maybe you're just dodging from a gun and then try to shoot over, and maybe that will be a problem. But as I was playing some of that game, for example, the paintball game in Rec Room, um, I just was able to just um, you know do that, and it, it works fine. Uh, do keep in mind that you have to have a little bit of ambient light because the ambient light will really help you uh, to uh, have the better performance out of the unit. Uh, one time I played kind of like really dim light in this room, and I was having a hard time with that. Uh, speaking of the room, uh, in this space here on the loft, I have a couch to my right and a TV on my left and then walls behind me and then my computer is right in front of me. And roughly in this space, I have probably about uh, three and a half feet uh, wide and about four feet uh, long, or five feet long here. So there's a little rectangle box here that I'm playing with. And during the setup, you will set up a boundary so that you don't step out of them. Uh, just make sure you do, you pay attention to that because uh, there is a little virtual boundary and as you are stepping toward it, it will kind of bounce and let you know. Uh, you don't want to go out to the virtual boundary because in my case I could hit the TV or I could uh, fall into the couch, so just keep that in mind. So next, let's talk about the experience of playing some games on this. Uh, I, for the most part, play Steam game. You can also do a window game and Oculus game, but I didn't have any Oculus uh, account or any game though, so I didn't mess with that. My friend has a bunch of Steam game on the Steam library, so he let me borrow them. The first game I tried was, I believe, was Space Pirate Trainer. I think that's a great game to recommend to you guys if you want to give that a try. It really gives you a nice experience of uh, getting uh, used to the headset and you know really spinning around 360, getting really a full envelope environment. I think you guys really enjoy that. So another game I play a lot was Archangel, which is a Mac Warrior kind of game. 
remind me of Pacific Rim, uh, you know, the scene where they basically take you and stick you inside a mech. There's a scene like that in the beginning of this uh, game, and in this game, uh, they put you on a platform, and as they're spinning you up and putting you into the mech, uh, you really feel the movement, even though you're just standing in one place. Uh, it just, I guess, all the movement and rotation uh, kind of play with your brain, and I thought for a second that my feet was actually moving. It's really, really neat. As they're spinning up. EEG stable. Strong gamma wave pattern detected. Go for dynamic link. Dynamic link. Active and synchronized. We are one, Captain. Captain. I'm detecting multiple humanics units in this sector. Have they spotted us? The fall patterns suggest they have not. The game itself doesn't require any movement from the game. Uh, it moved the mech itself, but you get to shoot around, you get to shield, and you get to do a bunch of different action, which is really fun. And uh, it got really hard to also at the same time. Shields forward, Captain. One of the other games that is really noticeable was a game called Beak Saber. Hey! I'm a living legend. You ain't heard yet, you not get the message. From the moment that so it's kind of like a DDR dancing game where you have object coming at you with different direction and then you will use two lifesaber, which are these two things here, and you are moving around trying to cut them or splice them or etc. And it's a really fun game with uh, I think like a dozen of songs. There is a bunch of free game on the uh, Steam app also. And you can download one called Rec Room, which I really like. It's a multiplayer kind of like community, and a bunch of people make a different type of game. There's paintball game, there's bowling. You can run around, chat with other people. And people can invite you. You can go to various different games, try different things. First thing I tried was that paintball game. It was really fun. Uh, you can dodge behind wall. You can uh, kind of like move around using the thumbstick. You kind of point to an area where you land. land. So you want to land behind a wall or something like that. And then just kind of stick your head out shooting. And it was really fun. So let's talk about some of the con about the unit. My friend didn't have any problem. You plug it in. They install the software, the driver, all that stuff. And then you're ready to go. You just have to install Steam and get the games. Uh, in my experience, I have a problem with Windows updates. Uh, it updated the latest version. I have the uh, Spring Creator update. And one of the updates actually broke it. And I didn't know at the time. I've tried various different steps trying to resolve the problem. It was not installing the uh, Mixed Reality Portal. So in order to get around it, I tried all kind of things and after about five or six different trial and error, I ended up using um, a uh, one of the Reddit thread that explained I just have to roll back one of the uh, specific update and when I re delete that update, it works perfectly fine. Uh, another thing I noticed is sometimes the unit would become irresponsive, maybe because I put my computer to sleep instead of shutting it down normally. I put my computer to normally to sleep a lot. And sometimes I had to restart my computer to get the whole unit to be detected again. Sometimes I'm plugging it and plugging it back in, but that's just too much of a hassle because I go in the back and I just rather restart my computer. It's a lot faster. Uh, the cable itself is about 10 feet long. Keep that in mind. Uh, and you do need a Bluetooth 4 dongle. Uh, like I mentioned before. Uh, one more down thing that I would want to point out, uh, which it depends on you, but really for me, uh, using rechargeable battery in these, I was getting about five to six hours of continuous use. So I will play two or three hours on one day, the next day I'll play for another two or three hours and the battery will be dead. So keep in mind uh, about that, just in case you want to play a lot and you want uninterrupted play, just it didn't take two double A's, so I have two in here for a rechargeable one. So with the high resolution of uh, 1440 by 1200, the unit itself produces some really nice color. And, uh, I feel like I'm enveloped in the environment, and uh, yeah, I didn't have any guard rage problem that people always mention. So I think this is why my friend decided to get this model over the other model that has the lower resolution. Uh, like I mentioned before, I played with a PlayStation 4 a VR one time in the store, and uh, yeah, it was fine, but the resolution was really kind of crappy, and uh, I think for the extra $100, $150, it's definitely worth it to get this unit because you're getting the higher resolution, and building headphones is also kind of nice. So other than that, beside the window problem, which I think is always going to come, uh, you just have to kind of you know Google and play around to figure out the, the setup. It was pretty much a plug and play unit. My friend didn't have any issues, but meanwhile, I have some issues. So overall, it's a really nice experience for me. First time using a virtual reality headset for for an extended period of time. I really enjoyed it and I definitely will get my own copy. Uh, for now, I would not want to go with the Oculus or any of the other setup because I think it's just too complex. With this, it's just two cable and a Bluetooth dongle and that works really well for the tracking. So I hope this short little review really helped you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, leave it down in the comment box down below and I'll try to answer them. I'm going to return this unit to my friend, but again, I'm probably going to get my own copy soon here. If you find this video useful, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so. And thank you and have a good week. Thank you.